Let's deep dive into this discussion and understand the implications of what exactly this means for startups. Joining in on the show, I now have Mithul Mehta, who's the CFO at Bloom Ventures. We've also got Siddharth Pai, managing partner at 3 for 1 Capital. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining in. Uh, Mithul, I'm going to start off with you. Why don't you just decode it for us? Because actually, it was in 2012 that the angel tax was introduced to uh, curb tax avoidance, to stop money laundering. How exactly was it? or was the process up until now for startups with the angel tax? So I think it's it's been a, a highly debated uh, point. A lot of time bandwidth has gone into it both at the investor end and the founder end. Uh, I think it started to plug, uh, you know, maybe a, a small loophole, but what it led to is, you know, just a circle of uh, lots of uh, scrutiny and uh, pain at the end of the founders and the investors. So. Uh, over the last few years, it, it has evolved uh, and, uh, you know, income tax officers started understanding how startups are valued, uh, valuation experts started understanding things, but it has always been a pain point because you can't really value early stage companies or startups, uh, you know, the way traditionally they've been valued. So it, it used to lead to a lot of litigation. Uh, I think this is a very, uh, a move in the very uh, good direction uh, and it, it will uh, help uh, in, in various ways. Right, so Siddharth, let me get you in because the removal of angel tax now everyone is saying is going to really foster a more supportive environment for startups and that will ultimately benefit the entire startup ecosystem. Your thoughts? No, I think that's actually perfect. Our tax on capital has always been antithetical to capital formation. And angel tax is uniquely Indian innovation, which has been an albatross across the neck of Indian startups for a substantial period of time. If a startup fails to meet its projections, it's actually commercial risk that the investor is taking. It does not end up becoming a taxable event for that matter. So this is why angel tax was actually unique in the entire world, which actually converted capital receipts and investments into income and sought to end up taxing that in that hands. And because of the extension of angel tax to non-residents in the year 2023, we saw startup funding dip year on year by 67% and as well reach a six year low for that matter. And now given the fact that angel tax has actually been removed categorically across all class of investors, there are no more barriers to barriers to capital formation that'll end up actually coming through and investors who've been on the fence can end up actually making can end up actually cutting that particular check and actually taking up taking a position in a number of India's very attractive startups as well. Right. So Mithul, do you think that one should, as of now, be a little bit cautioned, wait for the final print to actually understand the real impact before coming to conclusions as to what this could mean? That absolutely, I think that that is the case with most uh, tax amendments. Uh, the fine print will, uh, you know, throw out uh, specifics, and and that's important for everyone to factor. Uh, just you know, simply thinking that you know we won't need valuation reports or we won't need any valuation benchmarks anymore, I think that may not be the right way to think until we don't read the fine print. So we'll have to wait and see what exactly is is specified and will be a requirement going forward. Right, and you know, Siddharth, there are tweets galore from a lot of startup founders talking about how there was so much harassment, headache, unwanted anguish of this, as they've described it for the startups as well as the angel investors when it came to angel tax. Was it really that much of a headache? It was. So I think so. I think the first and foremost thing is that angel tax was not a tax on angel investors for the like. Angel tax from 2023 onwards was a tax on every single investor, be it a State Bank of India, a listed company, an LIC, a foreign, a foreign fund for that matter. Everybody came under the ambit of angel tax itself. So it became a tax on capital. Now, what would normally happen in terms of that tax on capital? Every time a company, when a company ended up actually issuing shares to investors, they would normally do so at a premium. Now, what the angel tax actually said is if there was a difference between the fair market value and the premium at which the shares were issued, that particular delta would end up getting taxed in the hands of the investors. Now, what would happen is what the tax man would end up doing is once you end up raising capital in a couple of years, they would end up sending you a tax notice. They would ask you for your audited financials as well as your valuation report and then do a one is to one comparison. If they saw there was a difference between your projections and your actual performance, they would end up rejecting your valuation report and actually levying, levying angel tax on the startup itself. Now, missing, missing your projections for that matter is something, is something that's a commercial risk. Even the government of India ends up actually giving revised budget estimates for every single budget for that matter, where they go back and they rethink the fundamental assumptions that they ended up actually using. So the tax department denying that to startups and seeking to tax business, uh, uh, someone not meeting their projections is actually patently absurd. 
And that was the risk that every single startup in the country ended up actually running for that matter, which is why a number of founders actually got fed up. And from the years 20, from the years to 2013, 2014, all the way to 2020, 2021, most of them ended up actually looking to move overseas or to end up flipping overseas as well. And even the chief, chief economic advisor mentioned that also. So it became a tax on capital. It became, it became a form of harassment of entrepreneurs and startups as well for that matter. And the patchwork of solutions created by the government failed to end up addressing the core issue at the heart of angel tax itself. So it's removal now ends up actually removing this level of friction and onerous reporting and responsibilities on entrepreneurs itself. Right, and Mithul, given that this step has now taken place, they're saying that there will be no more unfair tax hurdles um, and there's going to be a herd of unicorns, fresh investments taking place. How does it really simplify the tax process? So it it will definitely ease out, uh, you know, uh, the whole fundraise environment. Um, we're at as a as an economy or as a early stage ecosystem. We're at a cycle where we're going to start seeing exits. Typically, exits involves combination of primary investments into companies and secondary investments. Secondary investments generally happen at a discount because these are illiquid or unlisted investments. Now, abolishing an angel tax allows facilitation of these kind of structures or these kind of rounds um and and you know nobody really treats it that treats it as a misuse as such uh, so it it will ease out a lot there is a lot of time that has gone on the founders end in dealing with these kind of things uh, and and the fact that non residents were removed from the exemption uh, a couple of years ago i think that really really hurt uh, the ecosystem at large uh, with all of this out, uh, I think two things. One, uh, foreign capital coming in, uh, you know, investors will have a lot of uh, uh, ease in terms of investments. And um, other than funds, there are various investors, corporate entities, individuals uh, that have wanted to invest in the ecosystem. I think the fact that angel tax is not there anymore will uh, help uh, accelerate all of these investments. And the next few years should be uh, good in that direction. Right, and Siddharth, you know, this is being heralded as a decision that will uh, be a very crucial reform for the growth of startups in India. So how are you looking at it from a holistic standpoint? Yeah, I think 100%. I think the first and foremost part is that the friction that is, the frictions that were associated with capital investments have actually gone away to a large extent. Taxing capital as income is patently absurd, and it's a, everyone's happy that the government ended up actually looking at that as well. For that matter, so that was that's actually number one. Number two, also uh, the one the other reasons why startup the startups are actually going through a funding winter is because there was a large amount of political uncertainty across the entire world. There were close to fifty odd democracies that were actually going through an election during the last year itself, and uh, that was that kind of UK, UK, France, India, US, everyone for that matter. Now, given that all the elections have actually gone through, the political risk is actually reduced. Only the US election, which will happen by November, once that ends up actually going through for that matter. The political risk that actually prevented uh, investors from investing ends up actually going away. The third part is we have actually seen massive reform across the entire startup ecosystem as well, where the earlier playbook of raising as much money as possible and end up burning that money also and raising another round of funding has actually gone away. They become a lot more disciplined. They've actually ended up cutting burn. Many of them are looking to turn profitable also, which is something that investors have actually been waiting for for quite some time. And now we're going to see the convergence of Investors sitting on a large amount of dry powder waiting to invest into these assets. These assets end up, uh, these startups becoming far more disciplined also in reducing their burn, thereby becoming a lot more attractive. And the regulatory restrictions, which was a tax rate that was higher than that what, uh, as compared to listed companies, as well as angel tax actually going away, we will end up seeing a convergence of three important factors that will end up, uh, they'll end up actually accelerating capital flows to startups, as well as increasing FDI into the country. Right, and Mithil, same question to you in terms of how it really, you know, gives a boost to the startup ecosystem, how it fosters additional investment and growth opportunities, innovation in the country, really. Yeah, definitely. I think we're, we're poised to do well, uh, at least in the startup ecosystem for the next five to 10 years. That's our estimate. Uh, and, uh, you know, there have been various factors that are all pointing towards people wanting to start up here. I think we are great as an economy. Uh, the population allows us uh, or allows companies to experiment with different kind of ideas. Uh, the kind of diversity we have allows, uh, you know, different uh, startups to foster as well. So it will definitely help. Um, and uh, I think the biggest win over here will be the whole uh, ability for investors to invest without really thinking about 
uh, tax litigation. I think that's one big, big win uh, from all of this. So that, not just that, the government is also going to set up that 1,000 crore venture capital fund for investments in the space economy. What have been your readings? No, I think this is, the government has actually, the government has actually committed itself to supporting deep tech innovation within the country, which is why in the interim budget as, as well, they announced a 1 lakh crore fund to end up supporting uh, Shanghai sectors, such as uh, semiconductors, EVs, et cetera, as well. And even the fact that they've actually spoken about nuclear power and, and space tech as well, for that matter, shows that the government is actually serious behind this. A number of investors, a number of investors especially, have actually been very gungo on this asset class itself. But what this asset class has required for a long period of time is actually patient capital. So I think we're actually seeing the government's interventions end up actually creating the bedrock of patient capital that the private sector can end up building upon and end up scaling up as well. Even though these funds didn't exist, India has made tremendous strides when it comes to semiconductor verification, when it's come to the rise of uh, EVs as well, as well as when it comes to space tech also. So I think this is going to be a fantastic shot in the arm, which will ensure that India can actually create these sort of new age technologies and the new age economy itself. And a large amount of this can be done through rupee capital, as opposed to being overly dependent on foreign capital actually coming in. Right, and Mithil, apart from the angel tax, there was also a new assessment model for credit for MSME sector. That's on the cards. How could that potentially benefit some of these companies? Yeah, it, it, it eases out a few things. I think especially the assessment, uh, you know, at the early stage, one common uh, point of negotiation or deliberation has been how tax indemnities will work because most funds have limited fund life cycles and uh, tax indemnities are something that purchasers generally uh, accept. Uh, expect so i think from that sense uh this eases out you, it puts a timeline i think so far we were all looking at 10 years 12 years those kind of timelines uh the fact that that has been crunched down to five years uh, five years six years i think that will help uh ease the exit process as well uh and, and negotiations uh so that's uh also a, an added advantage alongside the tax rate rationalization Right, and Siddharth, you've also got the corporate tax rate for foreign companies that has been cut to 35 from an earlier 40 percent. Um, is this being viewed as a welcome move? I think that's a fantastic move in terms of parity as well, for that matter, because the government has also trying to be in, has been trying to encourage a number of foreign companies to set up shop in India. And even the GCCs as well that Karnataka is trying to attract also will end up actually looking at this through a very positive lens itself. I think what the government is planning on doing is to end up reducing the tax rates across the entire board for that matter and end up simplifying the tax structure as well. India's extremely high foreign tax rate has actually prevented a large number of companies from having a permanent establishment within India, which is why we've seen the rise of equalization levy and a number of tax contrivances to end up actually taxing them as well. So I think the government actually pushing towards this is a fantastic is a fantastic move. It'll end up seeing a lot more competition end up actually coming into the country and the job creation will end up actually picking up substantially also because of these changes as well. Mithil, let me get in your take as well as to how you're looking into the corporate tax rate for foreign companies being slashed. Yeah, sure. I think uh, we have had, you know, a lot of uh, general uh, inquiries around wanting to set up in India. Uh, a five percent cut is is definitely helpful. I think it will uh, be one of those things that allows companies to set up here and expand here. A lot of companies, like I said, I think the Indian geography, uh, you know, is such that a lot of companies want to set up here in India. It allows them to uh, create a huge user base. So, in that sense, corporate entities, uh, uh, you know, getting a favorable tax rate uh, will will uh, definitely increase the setup over here. And Siddharth, so would you have wanted anything more as a wish list uh, from the finance minister for the startup space? I think on the budget part, a couple of things you'd like to see is, number one, a, a more support for alternative investment funds, which are critical in terms of capital formation. There were numerous discussions that were actually held with the industry and numerous reforms that we asked for. Not many of this would have been substantial changes, but they would have greatly increased the ease of doing business for that matter. So I think that's number one. Number two, there was this entire thing of onshoring Indian innovation, which allows the startups who flipped overseas to come back to India in a tax-free manner. So the government of India did this for funds who were actually domiciled overseas in the year 2022, but they failed to extend that to startups as of now. So that, I believe, was a major miss. And the last part is, especially with startups, is with to ESOP taxation reform. India has the most onerous taxation structure for ESOPs in the entire world. For that matter, and even whatever concessions they've given only apply to a very a small handful of startups as opposed to the entire industry. So these were three big misses, but I think rationalization of long-term capital gains uh, 
tax rates between listed and unlisted securities and the abolishment of angel tax are two massive wins for the entire industry, which has been sorely lacking from wins from the budget over the last, over the last couple of years. Mithil, let me get in your thoughts as well. Have all the pointers been ticked or is there anything more that was anticipated? No, I think it, it was a decent uh, budget from the startup perspective. Uh, I think two additional uh, things that, that also should be mentioned is the rationalization of the tax rate for residents and non-residents. So what used to be earlier 20% for investors like us or founders of unlisted companies has now uh, come down to 12.5%. Uh, in alignment with uh, you know the the listed entity startup, so I think on, on the long term capital gains, so that's a big uh, win. I think we have been pushing for that for the last two three years. Uh, so that was one and two, the fact that you know they've mentioned uh, creation of the VCC structure, the IFSCA. This is again something that will benefit startups a lot. Uh, it was something that was missing in the Indian jurisdiction, and uh, for us to compete with Singapore, Mauritius, and for startups. Uh, to have the ability to fundraise uh, through the VCC structure. I think that's a big win as well. So overall, from the early stage ecosystem perspective, I think it's been a decent budget. There's always, uh, you know, more that we may want, but I think uh, compared to how it has been in the last few years, this has been one of those where, uh, you know, there have been significant changes from our ecosystem perspective. All right, good to have you on both on board. Thank you so much, gentlemen. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.